Okay, so we are going to continue on with our um, chapter overviews and study guidance. So let's get right to our screen share. And, uh, here we are in Mosby's Fundamentals of Therapeutic Massage Unit 3. So this is where we are learning about how to do massage. And much of the content in the previous units was how we behave and how we think as massage therapists. For this unit and the following unit, um, there will be designated playlists for this. So our first chapter we're going to discuss is chapter eight, ergonomics, biomechanics, and body mechanics. There are videos that occur uh, right with the textbook, and those for the HEC students are on Canvas for you, and they're available uh, through Evolve for any others. Um, and then we also have on the YouTube channel a designated playlist on body mechanics. Uh, the same is for chapter nine um, on positioning and draping and chapter 10 on massage manipulations and techniques. And then uh, you'll have another playlist to take a look at uh, about assessment procedures and developing a care plan. And this one will probably look like um, demos, demonstrations. Um, so a lot of uh, virtual support for you here. And it's Luke and I's intention to continue to add to these playlists uh, so that there's an ever increasing volume of support material. And what's nice uh, with um, the already uh, filmed uh, the video support is, is that you can watch it over and over. You can pause it, pause and practice, pause and practice, pause and practice. Um, and it's a nice way to have an ongoing support over and above the extensive photographs and pictures and illustrations that are in this unit of the textbook. So let's carry on here with this. So here is our introduction to this unit. And um, it is going to say the very same thing I just said is that this is the doing part. And then we were, are going to head to our first chapter, chapter eight, ergonomics, biomechanics, and body mechanics. Uh, this is a very important chapter. Uh, and it's practiced in the doing, not in the reading. Reading is important, but it's got to follow up with the doing. You need to mock yourself up in all the pictures. And if you've got a mirror that you can stand by, um, that would be extremely helpful because you can look at your how you're stancing uh, and the table height. Um, you're, for this segment of the textbook, you are going to want a massage th table. Um, and you don't have to spend a lot for this. Um, there are, uh, whether you like Amazon or not, there are inexpensive tables uh, that you can get through there that are good enough for you to practice with. There's uh, starter packages um, from other companies uh, like NRG or Oakworks, um, but you don't have to spend a ton of money, but you are gonna need to have the ability to practice at home and having a mirror to practice in front of so that you can watch yourself is really good. And uh, the, the pictures are very clear. And so a family member, even if they're not a massage therapist, and maybe even better that they're not, 
they can compare how you look to how you how the pictures look and can help give you feedback. The other thing that you can do is have somebody using, it's so easy to do this stuff anymore with your smart device, your phone, whatever you call it, video you doing um, massage or uh, standing next to the massage table and practicing various massage techniques. And then you can look at yourself doing that. And you can even set up with your own camera, or your own on your own phone, some sort of a holder um, and video yourself and then compare and contrast to what you see in the book. Um, so there's lots of ways to practice this. The massage community has done a poor job of creating solid information related to these topics. The Massage Therapy Foundation recently, I'm filming this September of 2020, recently completed a preliminary study um, with a, a professional ergonomics company uh, and some recommendations came out. As you are listening to this, I'm not exactly sure what the status on that information is. I was on the committee that was part of this, and so I did have a little bit of inside look at the information, and I was very pleased. Almost all of it is what I have put in the textbook here, reflected in the textbook. They seem to be uh, a little bit more lenient on whether the elbow is held, the arm is held straight with the, the uh, elbow joint fixed. Um, so that might be an area that there's a little bit more variability at. Um, but overall, uh, I feel very confident with what is being presented here and in order to have a sustaining financial uh, income with massage therapy, you have to be able to do a certain volume of massage. And if you are not efficient with massage, if you're working too hard, um, then you're not going to be able to work enough to be able to make enough money. Um, now, in the business chapter, we talked about how some people choose to have a part-time practice or a part-time income, uh, which is going to automatically reduce your volume. But you should be able to work full-time. You should be able to do 25 to 30 hours of massage application using a variety of methods, styles, pressures, etc., cetera, um, in a 40 hour work week. Uh, now, I think 25 hours is ideal. And then you've got time in between where you can attend to the non hands on portion of massage responsibilities like charting, documentation, room turnover, that sort of thing. Um, you should be able to do that. Now, whether you have a choice on how much massage you want to do, it depends on how much income you want. Um, and there, there is not a lot of influence related to size, but if somebody is very petite, um, then there might be, uh, a few limitations related to how much pressure they can deliver. Um, but I have taught people of all sizes, including those that are tiny, um, to provide massage. And, and if you do the ergonomics, you set your, your workstation up the way we tell you and use your body uh, efficiently, then it, it's minimal. Um, on how much uh, your, your own physique is going to make a difference. 
um, if you're very tall, uh, I have found that it, it's a little bit more of a struggle too because the tables don't necessarily are not high enough um, and so that can also uh, require some creativity so okay um, now we will work and work and work and work and work some more with you on this topic um, both in class and um, through reinforcement through zoom and video and all that kind of stuff so if you can become efficient here then the methodology the strokes and and all that kind of stuff fall right into place focus more here the rest of it will flow easily ta-da okay so uh, as you're using the textbook as a teacher here's your chapter outline here are the chapter objectives and here are the key terms and then here is the uh, kind of chapter overview uh, always stop and take a look at your mentoring tips and uh, here's a link out to the massage therapy foundation which I just mentioned so um, there are some uniquenesses to massage therapy application um, we apply uh, mechanical force at a diagonal area most of the time into the tissue um, and uh, that is that's the essence of what we do um, over and over and over whereas a lot of other manual therapy occupations it's more intermittent uh, they they don't do this for 15 45 50 90 minutes um, they might have a more spot work application so that's why we need our own ergonomics analysis and our own biomechanics and that analysis and, and hopefully the massage therapy foundation will be able to continue on with their research in this vein uh, you can donate to the massage therapy foundation and you can earmark money for the ergonomics and biomechanics studies so um, read your section objectives and uh, remember your learning chunks here. So uh, because there isn't a solid ergonomics analysis and biomechanics analysis for massage therapy, like there are for other occupations, nursing has a ton of this, for example, um, there's a lot of, uh, misinformation a lot of well i've done it like this and i've been okay so that's how i'm going to teach you to do it or there's been a reliance on other disciplines like various martial arts or tai chi or um, uh, we take yoga we've taken a lot unfortunately from those systems so those systems are extraordinarily valuable and they have a lot of cultural legacy that go with them but that they're not the way to do massage and so that that continues to be problematic um, and so this section that is research it's it's okay look the, what's in this chapter is a little different than what kind of has been taught over and over and over that obviously isn't working if massage therapists are getting hurt and burning out but it's a change it's a mindset and so when there's a change like that i have to or anybody has to do their due diligence to pull the research together and so that's what this is and 
it's important that you have an understanding of this. This, this might show up on the AMBLEX exam. And then we have to understand that this application of mechanical force is not new. There is a lot of understanding about how that's done. Uh, and it shows up in multiple places from engineering to uh, OSHA uh, and how they make recommendations for other occupations and uh, material plastics handling and the, you know, this, this this is not re a new thing. It's just using what's there that's solid and applying it to massage therapy delivery. So here are the, based on the research, um, and there's not a lot, uh, this is the area where most people get injured. And there is a gender difference. Um, and it, it has to do with uh, center of gravity and difference in muscle mass. Um, but that doesn't mean that as an individual, uh, you can stereotype the gender differences. But um, uh, one of the resources I've used is NASA. And they have had to do a lot of this type of analysis. Um, and they have to think about this in terms of size and shape of people and center of center of gravity. Typically a female center of gravity is lower and a male is higher, but again, that's very fluid. Um, but we do need to take a look at that. And where this becomes problematic is that most massage therapists are females. And uh, many of the continuing education providers or uh, instructors are male. And, and of course, you've got Luke with us, and he is going to be able to do stuff differently than I can. Um, and he's younger. Uh, that makes a difference as well. So um, we can't deny that this exists. So here, here's a little schedule uh, or a little mentoring tip here on um, work sustainability. Um, and how I have found that laying out a schedule is productive. So I suggest you use this as a framework for how you're going to, in the future, lay out your professional schedule. Um, and it's works within um, the typical spa and or franchise type schedule. It's, it's similar. Um, so you're going to want to take a look at this. And then while you're practicing in school, um, start to think about how you would want to uh, move this idea of scheduling out uh, into your how you're going to pre-think through your own uh, massage therapy practice. So do read uh, these studies. Uh, don't, you don't have to memorize anything here. Um, but it's important that you have good background in that. So here are the specifics on ergonomics and biomechanics. Ergonomics is the environment. Body mechanic and equipment, body mechanics is us. So um, read your section objectives. Um, these are the overarching objectives and here are your section objectives. And then we're gonna go through here and specifically talk about ergonomics first. So we're gonna talk about the massage area and its size. Um, the massage equipment, 
table types, heights, uh, widths, are they adjustable? Um, how to determine the size of the table that works for you. Um, and in general, we start to think about things being about half of your height. Um, and another way to think about it is right at your hip socket. Um, and uh, then you may adjust it down or up depending on the thickness of the client as well. So there are different types of equipment you can work with too. We're going to teach you to work up primarily on the table, but also to adapt to a mat uh, and a chair. Um, I am not thrilled with the massage chair situation, but it, that is a good marketing um, idea. So you do need to know how to uh, apply some upper body massage possibly uh, without hurting yourself here. Um, then we need to take a look at what causes uh, muscle injury and Dr. Wayne Albert, he has uh, done uh, research with massage therapists. He reviewed the chapter and, and these were the things that he contributed in terms of, huh, maybe I don't want to do that. Maybe I need to find another way to do this so that I don't have this repetitive movement or this um, I'm working too hard, this overexertion. Now, there has been research done on using your body effectively. And this is modified from OSHA and the idea of the staying within the neutral zone. And uh, further on, Robin Bellantani Anderson is uh, did some excellent work. She, she's also been involved with ergonomics and, and she did some excellent work with this as a chapter contributor on kind of a self-assessment um, process. So in general, green is best Yellow at the very beginning is not too bad, but as it approaches the red, it gets worse and red is a no-no. So that's what this is about here. So here's some pictures that talk about that center of gravity um, idea and the stance and how to set ourselves up and how we are using a weight transfer. Um, and this, this feels a little odd sometimes to people because you really, you're standing on a foot and an arm. That's what you're balancing on. Um, and these are opposite of each other uh, so that um, you don't rotate. That, that's why you use uh, the the uh, asymmetrical stance with one leg back and then your pressure or your point of contact with the client is from the other arm opposites here. And the videos do a really good job of uh, demonstrating this. But you could have somebody look at these pictures, whether they know about massage or not, and watch you. And, and they'll be able, and even better sometimes, they'll be able to tell you uh, when you're not within the recommended parameters here for positioning. So um, the, it starts at the feet and you can't slip. 
And so you, you have to wear a rubber soled shoe um, so that you have a good connection to, to the floor. And um, that just is all there is to it. And you don't want to use a rolling stool for the same reason unless you can lock it. Because if you use a rolling stool, every time you lean forward to transfer weight for every action, there's an opposite equal reaction. The wheels on that stool are going to scoop back behind you. So if you are using a rolly stool, and we do have some in the classroom, you're going to have to use your feet to fix that so it's not rolling around. So here's another overarching um, positioning. So when we are, because remember, massage is application of a mechanical force, and a mechanical force is a push or a pull. Okay, so this is kind of how we look when we are transferring weight forward to, to push. And this is how we look when we are transferring weight backwards to pull. And the big difference here is which knee is bent and which leg is straight. They, they just switch. There's the shoes. Um, and then this is the further uh, describing that reaction force. If I press down into the floor, which is going to transfer my weight up, then that's going to go into the client. We don't push from our upper, upper body to create the force. We use ground reaction force. We put pressure to the floor and then let that drive our weight forward. And then here's a pull where we are using our body weight to go back. You can also have variations in your posture, like uh, kneeling. Um, here, there's a, a pad here um, so that my knee is not hard on the floor. Um, so again, the pictures in this chapter go a long way. Uh, so here's our basic concepts of body mechanics uh, that I've already described. Now, here's the Here's a variation about working on a mat and using your foot, uh, which is fine and, and, and encouraged. And using just a standard cane uh, as a bounce provides additional balance. So we're, we're going to practice this, but you practice this at home. Before you get a massage table, you can put together a mat on the floor. And there's a, in chapter nine, 10, the, there's a bunch of protocols and video examples. And one of them is mat massage. So you can use that as an example. So the various methods here, this is compression. Um, they're going to have aspects to modulate um, the massage application. And clients tend to like pressure, not painful pressure, but a broad base of compression. There's, there's pleasure sensations that develop from that. Um, and so we, know, we need to know how to do that without overexerting ourselves. So how we come down into the tissue is a big player with that. Okay. And then the idea of angles, 45, angle, 45 degrees is joint stability.
pictures, pictures, and more pictures. And then uh, the push is going to create a direction of force. Um, so as we are gliding, we compress and then we push out. So um, that's what this arrow is trying to depict here for you. Yes, dear, what's up? Did she give you the new one? Laura's got a new number for Naomi. Yeah, so get a, and I don't have it, but that, uh, have Ryan call. She usually will answer Ryan. She did not answer, Ryan. Okay, I will try and tell her to get a hold of you. Okay, sounds good, sweetheart. Bye. So I think uh, you saw me uh, handle a phone call um, and I thought I had the video paused, but I had the screen share paused and I don't wanna go back and do all this right now. Uh, and so you can chuckle about that. Okay, so um, we were looking at massage application about down, so always find your pressure first, down, and then you're gonna glide out. And you wanna lean up a hill, because we've got down and out, and if we're not lean, leaning up against a slope, we apply a force down, but all of the energy that's produced to change that tissue we're going downhill goes off into the ethers a little bit. So always lean up a hill. And when you lean up a hill, then what happens is, is that this is a vector. We're applying the force down and at a 45 degree angle. So it's going to go out as well. And both of those are captured, both, both of the mechanical force um, intensities are captured when you do that. <coughs> this 
uh, figure is trying to help you understand um, some foot placement in comparison to some hand placement. So if you have um, your hand pressure, so here's your foot and here's the foot and then here is your, your front foot and then you're using your opposite hand. What's going to happen with that is that you're going to have some have less pressure. But if you have your because because you're evenly balanced here, you've got a triangle to balance yourself on. But if you want to deliver more pressure easier, then your back foot, front foot, and then you use the same hand as your front foot. Now, more of the weight transfer is going to go into the client because you're not balancing yourself like you do here in this tripod. So we teach you to set your body mechanics up and your positioning for more pressure. But if you're in a situation where you want to primarily use a lighter pressure, then you might want to consider shifting which hand slash forearm you use. Pressure is measured in, uh, this is arbitrary. Um, I've got a seven level pressure scale here. Nobody has done this specifically, um, but this is pretty accurate and, it, and it's set up on layers of tissue from the skin surface down to the bone. Um, and so um, it gives you some ideas here and you can use a regular bathroom scale uh, and follow this along and look at uh, your efficiency in pressure delivery. And then here's kind of a schematic with that, or schematic, kind of some pictures. And then you can use counter pressure as well. So that's a combination of a push, and then you pull the tissue back against you, which is gonna increase your force. And kneading actually is push, pin, pull. And that's how you get that twist or that torsion in the tissues. A drag has to do with, uh, how, are you slipping on the skin or are you pulling that skin along with you? And um, People tend to like a level of drag as long as it doesn't feel like an Indian burn. So you can have minimal drag with more lubricant, which reduces the friction on the skin. Or you can have less lubricant, which is going to create more drag and increase um, that ability to move that tissue instead of sliding right on it. And we will practice all of this in the classroom as well. Now, other factors to consider is duration. How long are we in a spot? Um, the speed, is it fast or slow? And the intensity. And then this is, these become modifiers. So, for example, if we have a fragile client or a patient, if we're working in the medical setting, and we're looking at comforting and soothing, our pressure levels are gonna be at the one, two level with no drag. Conversely, if we're uh, thinking about kind of trying to slide the superficial fascia, we're probably gonna have a pressure level um, of three. Seven would be really maximum three, four, five, and then we're gonna have to drag that 
tissue with us and it's, it's not, it's going to stop. There's a, a limit to how much tissue can slide back and forth. So that'd be a lot of drag. The speed would be slow. And how long we are on a spot and area is moderate to long. So if we were going to take a look at clients taking an anticoagulant medication, we got to watch how much compressive stress is put down in the tissue. So the pressure level might be a one or two and um, the drag is minimal because that has the tendency to affect the capillaries in the area. Um, a really good uh, anti-arousal massage would be described as pressure levels from two to five on a scale of seven. Uh, pressure level zero to or drag level zero to one, maybe even up to two on a scale of three. Speed moderate uh, and um, duration would be short to moderate, and this is going to uh, encourage somebody to perk up a little bit. Whereas if we go up here to an outcome of general relaxation, inhibition of sympathetic arousal, our pressure levels are four to five on a scale of seven. Um, Non-painful, drag is about a two, speed is slow and the duration is long. So this becomes the way that you modify um, the uh, outcome is through modulating these approaches. We also want to work with the client's own, you know, we all have a, a rhythm. We rock and we sway and we have pulses and all that kind of stuff. And we want to kind of tune into that with our client. Um, and that's very helpful as well. So now we're going to get into the segment on gender differences. This is a really good picture. Uh, Luke, his center of gravity is up here and mine is down there. And so um, that is going to influence uh, table height and how close we stand to the table and um, how much uh, stance width we have, what is our excursion length, uh, how long a stroke is. Uh, all of those become factors in that and that's why you will see differences between males and females or this body type with in comparison to this body type. And then this goes on to explain that. Stop and read the key points. And then this segment right here is going to talk about your own self care. Um, how you're going to take care of yourself in terms of ergonomics and biomechanics. Um, and here is that evaluation form. Uh, determining risk factors for massage therapy work tasks. So this is a little assessment form that you can use and there's a, a grading scale here. And Thanks again to Robin um, on how she put all this together. So we'll play with this in class. This also can be used with somebody who is observing you that isn't necessarily a massage therapist. They, they can tell um, by looking at this kind of where you are. You can self screen by looking in a mirror. 
So here's the instructions for a proficiency exercise. And this is what's gonna happen now. Neck and shoulder, forearm, wrist, and here's what's gonna happen if you are not attentive to these issues. So we've got correct and now you're gonna get into trouble. And correct and nope, now you're gonna get into trouble. Okay. We're really going to limit the, you in using your thumb. Um, really not going to let you do that. Uh, that joint just can't stand up to it. So um, just kind of keep that in mind. I see this a lot, people all twisted up or on top of the stroke like this instead of leaning and hunched over feet position non-optimal having the weight on the wrong foot not being able to move efficiently around a massage table So this, this uh, schematic here gives you uh, about how far apart your feet are, shoulder width, and then the front foot when you go into the asymmetrical stance, about how far forward that is. And so th this is something here that you will continue to do over and over and over and over and over. I, I monitor my body mechanics all the time. Um, I notice how I feel if I'm working in an ergonomics, a setting where the ergonomics are not ideal. Uh, and um, you'll, you'll be able to tell um, if you're not doing it efficiently because you won't feel good. You'll have aches and pains. Now this is a training effect. This is just like how you would function as a, um, an athlete. You have to get the form down. So um, make use of the resources that are available. Uh, review the information using the questions and make sure you make use of the videos I mentioned, both on Canvas related to the chapter as well as the YouTube channel that we have. All right, now this is a topic we will spend time on in the classroom. Um, I, I can't teach this as well. This is just an overview of the chapter to help you read and understand the chapter and study the chapter. This is something an instructor needs to uh, work with you directly with and that you need to experience this. You can't get this only from looking at a picture or watching somebody do it. You, you have to do this and you have to continue to perfect this and practice it until it becomes habituated. And then you'll be able to feel, look, that's kind of off. I need to take a look. Do my feet need to move? Lots of times that's what it is. I need to move my feet or do I need to, am I twisting? You know, and uh, be very attentive to self-correction. Okay, this is the first chapter in this unit of doing.